Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to print uh, another cube. So this one's going to be ABS this time. So uh, let's take a quick watch of the time lapse, and then we'll come right back to talk about the cube. Time lapse video. Okay, so we've watched the time lapse. Now let's talk about the cube. So, um, again, this one's done in ABS. We did uh, another one in TPU, and boy, this stuff stinks. Um, I've got two DaVinci printers, and they're sealed containers. And this is the first time I've printed ABS outside of a sealed uh, printer, and it smells. Um, actually, a little bit surprised. However, uh, one of the things I did want to kind of point out is in the last episode we, we talked about how um, this top piece, uh, I printed at one millimeter, it uh, didn't come out very well. Uh, it came out actually pretty good with the ABS. The ABS spanned very nicely the bridges and everything else um, where the TPU didn't. So again, I think the one lesson for the TPU going back to that would be uh, use at least uh, two millimeter uh, surfaces. So, uh, actually, I think I'm going to try another one and see if that works. However, I did get some warping. I set the bed temperature to 90 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, did get some significant warping. And I, t I tell you what, folks, the more and more I work with the various PLAs and the PLA offshoots and, and that kind of stuff, the more I hate ABS. Um, and, and I basically come to the conclusion I'm going to. I'm going to base. I'm going to reflash the uh, Da Vinci's just so I can convert them over to PLA and other stuff because um, I, I I don't know. Every time I do it on the Da Vinci's, I, I get warping, even in the sealed container, and even after doing all kinds of magic to try to keep it. I don't have that problem with PLA or, or other stuff. Um, anyways, but that's not the point. So the point is, I want to get back to measuring the cube to do some measurements on the cube and hopefully this time we'll get to see a little bit better so uh, let's take the calibers and I would say that's pretty darn close I don't know if you can see that so so basic it, yeah, that bad word basically so I mean I'm at uh, almost 20 so 19.99 that's pretty darn close let's try the other side uh, the other side, I'm just a tad bit over, maybe about nine thousandths over. So this one is actually pretty close. Get my bad hands out of the way so you can see. Uh, trying to work this out. So there you go. So uh, that's pretty good. Now let's check the top. I'm going to measure from the center because we got the. So this one is probably the furthest off so I'm at 0.29 over and then let's check the top of the hole um, I'm pretty close I don't know if you can uh, however I'm at uh, 9.74 on the top and I'm a little bit undersized on the bottom at uh, 8.98, so there's definitely some sagging there. 
So, so this is interesting. So ABS uh, held up pretty true. Again, I want to go over. So I'm um, basically 20.05 on site A. I'm at base. Uh, I'm at uh, there's that word again. Basically, 19.9899 roughly on the other side. And on the top, I'm at 20.32. So all in all, um, not bad. Um, you know, I, I would really like ABS a lot better if it wasn't for this warping. I just really have not had good luck. And I've been doing this now for over a year, and I've tried all kinds of stuff to, to try to prevent it from warping on several different machines. However, it just... Uh, it really seems to work now this was done at a five percent infill so it's pretty much empty uh, an empty cube as I mentioned when I did the uh, TPU one and so a lot of times you know they, they say if you get too much infill that it uh, it'll pull up uh, because of the, the changing in layer temperatures and so I, I've tried different temperatures laying it down I've tried different bed temp I, I've tried all kinds of stuff and again I think I'm just rambling now it, is like can't get that stop now the one thing is uh, I should know yes I did it on the, this this build tack which uh, didn't do too bad for holding down the ABS actually um, if I were to do a bigger part I would definitely do a brim uh, to kind of hold it down but it, it did hold fairly well and I've tried glue I've tried all kinds of stuff I've tried uh, uh, you know the the acetone and ABS mix and, and that and, and I still get you know roughly the same depending upon um, the pole and, and I think probably the acetone ABS mix is one of the, the better ones however the, the smell just you know because I have my shop here in the basement and the wife lives upstairs and uh, you know you start cooking acetone at, at roughly 90 degrees or 100 degrees C it, it stinks and so uh, again, this is why I'm becoming a bigger fan of alternative plastics versus ABS. However, this is very rigid and sturdy. So, again, I'll put the uh, information down below. And, again, I, I'm building a spreadsheet of these as I go through and get these done. And I'll also uh, post the spreadsheet on, on the uh, uh, website once I'm done with it, too. And, and, you know, you can use it to... Because again, what I want to do is come up with a little bit list of constants to understand when I'm building something, what maybe coefficients do I have to build in my models to take into account potential expansion and contraction of uh, of the material. And then also, you know, one of the reasons I'm doing the whole top and bottom is is there's going to be a little bit of sagging and also the way uh, you know a, a filament machine adds in uh, material is going to affect the whole size. So. If I see repeated differences, which I, I think I will, between the tops of the holes and the bottom of the holes, I will know I'll have to size to the bottom of the hole um, in my designs when, when printing out. So, um, you know, maybe in a future one I'll do one with it sitting on the side and see what kind of, um, I think mostly that will be oblonging or sagging from the bridging uh, of the two. Anyways, uh, hopefully you're finding the series interesting on... Um, on the various filaments and kind of comparisons and once I do get get a number of the filaments because let's see I'm going to do I've already did TPU I've done ABS I'm going to of course do PLA I'm going to do PTAG and then I've got another one down here I can't remember what it is some other um, and then once I get I think those done uh, I'll, uh, I'll probably summarize, uh, summarize the spreadsheet but I think there's another one out there, hips or something like that. I've seen that uh, Joe Telling uh, got a lead spot and um, he got some hips. And I've heard of it before, but I really haven't seen it. So maybe I'll get some of that in and try it. Because, again, what I want to do with this channel is, is provide some basic building blocks. There's that word again, basic. Well, it's not basically building blocks. So for you, the home hobbyist manufacturer, I have reference guides um, to design and construction of your own 3D models and be, be more productive within 3D space. So, anyways, hey, give this a thumbs up if you liked it. Even if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs up. Just click the bottom. It's really easy to do. You just move that mouse over to the thumbs up. You click on it, and it's a done deal, and I greatly appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.